Welcome everyone to the first ever episode of the newest Dropkick Discussions podcast here on Sports Kita, the Rosser Rewind. I'm Corey Guns, and please join me in welcoming the latest member of the SK team and the featured guest of this podcast. You knew him as Darren Young in the WWE. He is Fred Rosser. Mr. Rosser, welcome to the SK family, and I'm excited to be doing this podcast with you. Mr. No Days Off is in the house, hardly home, but always repping. I'm always on the move, and... Um, you know, I always say, don't die with the story in you, tell it. So we've got a lot to tell. Absolutely. And, and every month we'll be here talking to Fred and looking back at some of his career highlights and major moments during his run in the WWE, as well as sharing stories and talking about the current state of wrestling as well. And today for our first episode, we're going to talk about uh, Fred getting his first taste of gold in the WWE when he, along with Titus O'Neil as the primetime players, won the WWE Tag Team Championship. But before we get into all that, we are fresh off the heels of Survivor Series weekend, and I wanted to ask you, Fred, did you catch either uh, NXT War Games or Survivor Series? And if so, what did you think? Survivor Series I caught. Uh, it was incredible. You know, Daniel Bryan against The Fiend under that red light special. It was a lot of fun, man, to watch. And uh, those guys those guys killed it last night on survivor series and um also the um the uh, the survivor series match uh you know raw smackdown nxt uh, was incredible it was like the you know the finishes and the moments that were taking place last night at survivor series i mean keith i mean keith was the mvp of the match i feel uh he was definitely the mvp don't you agree yeah, I definitely think of all that group that he really, you know, got got the spotlight shown on him. And I think kind of a surprise, too, that he was the last guy standing for the NXT side. Exactly. That's the way I would have definitely uh, went that direction, uh, you know, highlighting Keith. You know, there's no one that moves like him, there, uh, you know. You know, there's a lot of old timers, you know, I hate to use the word old timers, but I'm sure like they're probably saying, oh, why is he, why does he move around so big for a big guy? You know, well, if he can do a moonsault, if he can do uh, it, it, if he can move like a lightweight, well, just display that, you know, um, wrestling, it's all ice cream, just different flavors. So, you know, if he can move like that, you know, highlight your strengths and hide your weaknesses if you have to. But he's an amazing athlete. And I'm glad to see that he was uh, one of the last ones. But Roman Reigns, you know, the big dog himself, uh, fighting from up under, was right on top at the end. What do you think? You know, you're a NXT alum. Uh, you know, they pretty handedly got the win overall you know winning four matches i think smackdown got two and raw just one so nxt as a brand got put over you know pretty hard and pretty well at survivor series what what were your thoughts of you know were you surprised that they went the direction of you know kind of putting over the the young guys and the new guys as opposed to the raw or smackdown brand well you know you have to kind of look at how the nexus the original nexus was booked i always talk about nxt when NXT first started, I was an original, you know what I mean? So I started NXT where we were doing obstacle courses and like I can't juggle, I can't I can't run with a barrel, I can't I don't have a special hidden talent. So the NXT of old, I mean, I was terrible at it. and it took me that much longer for fans to kind of get behind me uh because of my original nxt experience you know and i wasn't comfortable i would have nightmares i would literally have nightmares when those yellow ropes would be uh getting put on for tv but now you look at nxt now man it's like i wish i could have debuted like now you know what i mean but you know with wwe never say never and uh who knows we could have a nexus alliance reunion you know what i mean to take out the take out nxt or to mess up raw or smackdown so you would have all these factions and divisions you, you, you just never know in wrestling wwe never say never i'd definitely be something i think a lot of fans would would be interested in and you know you talked about maybe because you know right. like that like the nexus alliance the nexus original are older now they're wiser they've got uh more wisdom to them so i mean why not but never say never right 
Oh, absolutely. I, I think that would you make a great point that, you know, seeing at the time of the Nexus formation, you guys were the new breed and, and the new young upstarts. And now, you know, you guys maybe, you know, coming back with some, you know, some, like you said, some wisdom, you know, underneath you and now maybe being looked at not so much as the fresh crop, but now coming in to take out, you know, these new guys from NXT and the guys that think that they're the, the new fresh faces on the scene. I think that would definitely be interesting. Exactly, Corey, because we would be coming back for redemption because, you know, we didn't win SummerSlam. You know, it was Team Raw that beat, uh, you know, the Nexus. And it's and, and Jericho says it himself, you know, that he went out to bat for Nexus to win. But it's just unfortunate that, you know, uh, we were not put over in that big match for us because that's how you elevate stars you know the other team raw guys they wouldn't have lost their positioning you know you would have just helped elevate guys and that's actually what i do uh with my career now moving forward you know i i just want to wrestle quality matches against guys that have potential to make it to the pros uh i do clinics just after i'm going to get done talking with you i'm going to be doing a mini clinic here in new jersey since i'm home for the holiday that's why they call me mr nate that's why they call me mr no days off Corey. remember that no days off so i'm trying to inspire the youth and the masses so i'm busy i'm busy doing clinics uh and i'm busy doing podcasts too uh doing this first one so it's very exciting for me uh you know at this point in my career i want to be able to keep rocking and rolling and i and i'm doing it as we speak yeah, well, like I said, I know the Sports Kita team is definitely ha- happy to have you on board, and and we'll have to we'll have to come back around and talk about the Nexus some more, maybe on on this podcast. I can tell by the the energy in your voice that that's probably a topic that we could definitely cover in long form uh, here on the podcast one day. Absolutely, Corey. Well, let's go ahead and, and dive into today's topic, and you know, as maybe. Uh, couple of missteps along the way with that nexus angle this uh we're going to talk about today was a time where uh you guys were were riding highs the prime time players with your your tag team partner titus o'neill uh and like i said we're going to talk about uh the time that the prime time players won the wwe tag team championship uh, it happened at money in the bank 2015 uh when fred and titus o'neill defeated the new day to win the titles now this was actually the second run for you and titus as a team you were first packaged together as the primetime players in April of 2012. How did the idea of Team in Titus and yourself and a tag team first come about? Well, first things first, people always ask me when I wrestle and do my clinics all over the world. They ask me if I if, if I'm still friends with Titus. Of course, I'm still friends with Titus. You know, like what are you crazy? Like we rode with each other for the longest. You know, he was like. Uh, a, a part of my family you know we were with each other more than we were with our family so of course I still speak to Titus he actually shot I had uh, one of the biggest matches of my 17 plus career uh, here at here in New Jersey um, at uh, none other this uh, uh, Sedentary University Sedentary University I wrestled one of my toughest matches and I had Titus uh, you know make me a little message trying to root me on for social media and uh he just had a blast he said you know i ain't see d young in a while you know so i i don't know if this is going to be millions of dollars it might not be pennies on the dollars but you you're going to be in the ring with the ncaa all american d young so you better you know you, your wins better be up you know so he was just rooting me on and we were just having fun but yeah i mean when titus and i one, you know, uh, you know, brothers, they kiss and make up, kiss and make up. But, you know, uh, our our second run, we we've had finally finally got gold. You know, we have finally got gold. But this man seen a liking in Titus and I, you know, it was backstage. It's a lot of stuff that happens backstage is what gets brought to TV. So, um Vince Cena liking in Titus and I. He always seen us together, uh, laughing and having a good time. And Titus is a loud guy, you know. He's very, um, I know him, you know, so I know he's a teddy bear, but he can be intimidating. And me, I'm a shy guy. I'm a quiet guy. When the red light's on, is that's when I light up. Uh, but I'm just a naturally shy guy, so opposites attract. So when Vince, uh, 
so Vince ultimately when we brought up when we were brought up on the roster, we ultimately um, you know after I was doing the Nexus and all that stuff and Titus had got done with NXT, uh, I think it was the third or fourth season, and uh, Vince just seen a liking in us and eventually we started teaming up and then it was John Laurinaitis uh, that gave us our SmackDown contracts and we started doing our thing, man. Um, Titus was was and will always be a lot of fun to work out with and the one thing about Titus is that when he first joined FCW Florida Championship Wrestling he was right off the football field you know so uh, a lot of people don't take a kind to people that aren't passionate like I am uh, about wanting to do this since I came out of my mom's womb 1983 Titus uh, has seen it here and there the wrestling but he wasn't a fan. His passion was football. But when he had the opportunity from Steve Kern to uh, just give it a shot, well, originally it was uh, Batista, who they were neighbors, and Batista said, you should get into wrestling. And uh, eventually Titus thought about it, and then he told him where to go to, and it was Steve Kern uh, in FCW, Florida Championship, Rex, or, uh, Florida Championship Wrestling. Titus started and uh, no one wanted to get in the ring with him because, like, he was new. He was new. And he had gotten to this fight with this one wrestler, Lennox, Mac- Lennox McEnroe. Titus was two weeks in. And Lennox McEnroe, like, he he was, uh, you know, he's a veteran, you know. And, uh, again, I was new, too. I was probably uh, a couple months new. And then Titus got brought up to FCW. And Titus got into a fight with Lennox McEnroe because Len- Lennox McEnroe was roughing up somebody in the ring. And Titus stood up for the guy. And then eventually Titus and Lennox McEnroe started fighting. Eventually Lennox McEnroe had got uh, fired. And then, you know, Titus uh, stayed. But they were both, I believe, suspended. And, um, you know, no one wanted to work with Titus. But I was always the guy that stayed stayed after the first one there in practice at FCW to work with Titus, you know, I said, Hey, Titus, man, you know, keep doing your thing. And the same people that are shitting on you now and not helping you are going to be kissing your ass later. And I'm pretty sure they were. So, uh, I would always teach Titus, you know, you got to know your size, big man. Like, uh, you don't need to do much, you know, we're all about storytelling. So I would always tell, tell him how to move, how quick to move, like just, how to work as a big man because he's 6'6", you know, close to 270, you know, so he doesn't need to do much. Uh, so I was that go-to guy. And eventually, like like I said, when we were already up on the main rosters, we were already hanging out and Vince saw a liking to us. I'll never say a bad thing about Vince McMahon because he always gave me an opportunity. He gave me the opportunity with uh, Make Darren Young Great Again. Uh, and we'll get into that in uh, the future. But, yeah, you know, Vince loved Titus and I. So like I mentioned, you guys were first packaged together in April of 2012, and you know, it sounds like maybe a, a situation of seeing something, you know, a spark or an energy between you two behind the scenes, and so maybe giving you an opportunity to bring that in front of the camera. Uh, but then in January of 2014, the team was disbanded when Titus turned heel on you, and then you unfortunately tore your ACL in April of that year, and it put you on the shelf for almost a year. What was it like to try and deal with a major injury like that uh, that put you out for such an extended period of time, and right around this time, where it appeared that you were about to begin a singles run. Yeah, I wouldn't say. Uh, I don't think I was out a year, maybe ten months. You know, I mean, I know it's two months, but uh, yeah, I think I was back pretty. Um, you know, at the right amount of time. Uh, you know, the one thing that's more the most intriguing about getting hurt is the rehab, because you go from. Uh, being healthy to being, you know, in a vulnerable state where you can't move your limb, you know. So the rehab is very intriguing. And I always say three sets of 10 don't cut it. You have to go above and beyond. You have to do like four sets of 20. You you have to put in two a days if you want to become or, you know, healthy again. You know, you want to be 120 percent, you know, you want to be better than what you were when you got hurt. And that's what the you know ultimate goal was for me was to get healthy again. And um, you know now, thank God, I feel great. You know, it's always the prehab. The prehab is what is very important because once you get uh, 
once you um, injure yourself, uh, you, you you can't forget the stuff that you did in rehab. The rehab is an important part of um, getting healthy again. So yeah, getting healthy again was my main goal when I got hurt. And you know, injuries come with the territory, but it it's how you it, it's how you bounce back. Were there plans at the time, like I said, I mentioned that, you know, they did the heel turn uh, with Titus, you know, turning heel on you. And uh, it seemed like, you know, obviously there would be a natural feud there between you two and then kind of sending you both off in your own direction. Were there some plans in the immediate future for you uh, at the time of the injury? And if so, you know, was it discouraging to, to kind of feel like maybe this was your time to really kind of start breaking out on your own and, and then have this injury hit at kind of an inopportune time? Uh, you know, I mean, stuff happens, you know, stuff happens. Injuries come with the territory. Um, uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head if there were any plans, but you know, we, we don't get, we don't get much time off. And the only time you get time off is when you get hurt. And, you know, unfortunately you don't want to get hurt because that's when you don't make money. So, um, yeah, I had, I don't remember. I really don't remember if like there were plans for us. Well, as you said, you made a, a, a great rehab and recover from the injury, and you ended up returning to TV in January of 2015. And it didn't take long for you to reunite with Titus and reform the primetime players in February of that year. There seemed to be some renewed energy around the team, and uh, especially as well with your connection with the crowd. It seemed like the team was really starting to get over uh, with the crowd, the millions of dollars, you know, catchphrase and, and the T-shirts and, and things that were coming out. You guys were kind of really starting to, to gain some momentum. Uh, you guys gave the Ascension their first main roster loss, which at the time was a big deal because the Ascension were, you know, coming in from NXT and had been their longest reigning tag champs at the time. So that was a big deal to give them their first loss. And then in May, you guys were part of the first ever tag team elimination chamber match in May of that year. I got to tell you, man, uh, that first ever tag team elimination chamber match, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the OG himself, called me the MVP of that match. So, uh, really? and also, and also, as we speak, uh, a couple months ago, he had asked Mark Henry for for my number, I guess, to maybe be on his show. Uh, so. You know, that means a lot to me. And also, a third thing was Steve was always nice to my partner that I, that I would bring backstage. And, uh, you know, my partner's favorite wrestler out of all of them. He wasn't a big wrestling fan, but it was Steve Austin. So, like, he, he um, he's a major deal to me. And for him to say I was the MVP of the first ever tag team elimination ch chamber match, it meant a lot to me. Yeah, I don't think there's any denying that, you know, your all's performance and, and maybe you're specifically in that match – you know, it led us to the match with New Day at Money in the Bank, and I'm, I would bet that there's an argument to be made that had your performance in that match not been as strong as it was, that maybe there wouldn't have been a thought to put the tag titles on the primetime players at that time. Exactly. So I'm glad I got the opportunity to be a champion in some way. Tell me, what did it feel like to win the tag titles, considering this was the second try at a run with you and Titus as a tag team and having come back from the ACL tear? You know, there had to be a feeling of, of vindication a little bit, wasn't there? Um, it's almost like, and again, we'll talk about make Darren Young great again in the future, but, you know, in this situation, give a dog a bone, man, you know, you know, Give us a chance to hold some gold. Give, a ch give us a chance to have an opportunity to, you know, be proud of making moves and be and and be proud of what we talk about. You know, you know, uh, know yourself, know your worth, and never cheapen your worth. And you know, we do so much work for the community, uh, and it's not something that like uh, we're ha we have to do. It's something that we love to do. So it's just like kind of, you know. We already represent the company already outside of the ring, so let's represent the company inside of the ring. And we had that opportunity, thank goodness. Was there any difference in kind of the way you felt about the victory between your perspective and Titus's perspective? You mentioned that, you know, you're a guy that, that came out of the womb loving wrestling and knowing that this is what he 
you wanted to do you know with your life and Titus maybe not so much came more from the football field and you know was an athletic freak and so kind of took the opportunity but hold on Corey Titus has that Titus has that mindset of winning so uh both our mindsets were uh parallel to one another that we wanted to win we wanted to represent the company and he deserved it too because i seen it with my own eyes he proved everyone w wrong he worked hard in the ring he was there late he was there early he proved himself and you know he and and he told john cena when Titus first started, when John Cena was visiting the school in FCW, that he's going to be up on the main roster someday, and he proved everyone wrong. So you'd say this definitely meant just as much, you know, the the impact of this was not lost on, on Titus, even though he maybe not grew up, you know, as a fan or a big, you know, proponent of, of wrestling, that, you know, it wasn't lost on him how big of a deal this was, you know, compared to yes. you know, yourself, right? It was a huge deal for him, and it was a huge deal for me because uh, for me, being the first openly gay wrestler, uh, I've been able to encourage other athletes that they have a duty to instill confidence in our youth and to lead by example. So by being the first, you know, uh, I could give hope to those that are battling with themselves and then they're not comfortable with themselves. And at the end of the day, I want people to see me on TV with championship gold and say, you know what, if he can do it, so can I. What was your experience like working with the New Day? Oh, they were they were a treat, man. They were really a treat to work with. Um, uh, you know, Kofi and I, we you know we came up in the same area. I remember I was doing shows in Chaotic Wrestling in Boston, Massachusetts area, and Kofi was doing security. You know, so I remember when Kofi started, and and a lot of people don't know Kofi got signed off. Our tryout match. Him and I had a tryout match in the uh, Lowell, Massachusetts area. And, you know, Kofi had that boom, boom going on. And he ultimately got signed off of me. And, you know, fast forward to him doing the New Day and me doing primetime players. Our paths meet again. So to be able to work with him and uh, Xavier and Big E, who uh, I remember he started FCW. And I fell in love with his size and his work. And always wanted to help him as much as possible so to be able to work work work, work with those guys and the uh, all the personalities because everyone's a personality uh which is the beauty of what we do um but you know to to be able to take the championships from them and be able to, to tell stories with them uh i'll always cherish those memories Having been there from the start, you know, with a guy like Kofi Kingston, you know, what did you make of, of his run recently as, you know, this past WrestleMania season, Kofi Mania was running wild, and, and to see a guy like him, you know, win the WWE Championship on the grandest stage of them all, you know, what did you think about, you know, his his recent run and, and kind of getting to the top of the mountain, uh, as it were, you know, by becoming the WWE Champion? No matter how you slice it or dice it, he did it. You know, he he uh, you know he 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 accomplished something. You know, he became WWE champion, and you know, people get upset about how he lost the championship. It is what it is. Brock Lesnar is a beast. We are storytellers. You know, we are storytellers. But do you really think Brock? Uh, you really think Kofi had a chance with Brock? Like, I mean, come on, you have to tell that story. He is a monster. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it is what it is. He had a beautiful run. I was, I was, I was, you know, right there. I, you know, I, I was doing an appearance at David Buster. Uh, that that WrestleMania, I, I, I would have loved to have been there, but I was doing an appearance in wet in uh, Hollywood, and um, to watch it live was incredible you know i mean there was uh people crying there were people cheering and those are moments that we want to always capture those are moments that we want you know and we got it you know so um and kofi was able to you know defend the title for almost six months or so so be proud of that you know just just and you know, i'm still a fan myself and I, you know i started I started being a fan and I got into the business and I'm still doing the business. So I'm just not 
uh, writing for Sports Kedia Wrestling. I'm not just doing pro and bro wrestling. I'm still wrestling. I'm still active. I'm still fan. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy. I'm, I'm very happy with Kofi's run. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, it was four years ago <laughs> that you and the New Day had this match that we're talking about at Money in the Bank. And four years since, you know, the New Day are still going strong. They're still a mainstay of the tag team division. Obviously, we talked about Kofi's had his run as WWE champion. Did you have a sense then that the New Day and this collection of the, you know, these three guys, Kofi and Big E and, and Xavier Woods, had, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but had, had a, a character and had a role that would be this long lasting? Like I said, that four years since then, they're still going strong with the same dynamic and the same group. And uh, like I said, they're still a mainstay of, of the tag team division and the WWE championship picture. Yeah, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, they they evolved. You know, they were supposed to be preacher men. You know, they right. evolved into you know they evolved into what they wanted to be, and uh, and the people fell in love with it. You know, and that's what it's all about. We're storytellers. You know, there's uh, there's under 800 people that have really made it in wrestling. You know, so that's a very small number. So these guys are so creative and when you have creative people behind you you could do creative things and big things and they're doing you know they're um they're doing that as we speak well you and titus had made it as tag team champions and the primetime players would go on to have about a two-month reign with the titles uh, you would retain the titles against the new day in july at battleground but would then lose the titles to them at SummerSlam in a four-way match that also included the Lucha Dragons and Los Matadores. You and Titus kind of floated in limbo for the rest of the year. The two of you would compete in some singles matches, but you would also team occasionally with Damian Sandow in some matches, as well as team with Titus on and off as well. Then in February of 16, Titus was involved in an awkward at best situation with Vince McMahon on an episode of Raw, and he was suspended subsequently for 60 days, which ultimately ended the run of the primetime players for good. What do you remember about that incident and the events that followed? Um, uh, it's just unfortunate. Um, you know, you catch the boss on the wrong day. Uh, stuff happens, you know. Um, but hey, life goes on. Life goes on. Uh, I wish, you know, I wish it didn't happen. But when you're in the moment and you do what you do, um, sometimes, you know, you have to unfortunately suffer the consequence. Um, but, you know, Titus is a great guy, you know, and Vince McMahon is a great person. So uh, I have I have nothing bad to say about anyone. It's just it's just unfortunate that. Uh, that the situation went down the way it went down and um yeah i mean just i mean there's really nothing for me to uh say about you know it, you know it was shocking that it happened but hey life goes on D did you feel that ultimately the primetime players could have maybe lasted a little bit longer were you disappointed to to kind of see this run come to an end or did you feel like the time was right that you'd achieved you know, being tag team champions, you'd kind of you'd get, you conquered that field, you know, and so maybe it was time to move on and, and maybe try to do something different as singles. Yeah, you know, uh, when people, when fans ask me, uh, am I am I upset or was I upset? I said, I say to them, you know, I, I worked very hard to get where I got. You know, I I, I didn't just get signed in 2009. I not only got signed, but I had a relationship with WWE since 2002. So from 2002 to 2009, I've done over 40 or over 40 extra spots with them. I've been told no over 40 times until I got that one. Yes. So I'm very proud of the career I've had in WWE. I'm very proud of what I'm doing now. You know, so I still can go backstage right now and visit my friends and say hi and be nosy. You know, a lot of people, unfortunately, can't do that. But uh, I think I left WWE a good, a good reputation. 
on a good reputation that um, hopefully I can see doing some kind of work with them in the future with all the stuff they're doing overseas and stuff like that. I truly believe there's room for everyone at the finish line. I mean, as we speak, I'm trying to make moves in New Japan, you know, so I hopefully hopefully I can um, speak that into existence because I'm speaking it into existence now. So, you know, I'm grinding away. I'm grinding away. So I'm very happy with my career in WWE. And, you know, yeah, again, nothing lasts forever. And I'll never say a bad thing about Vincent Mann. It's just unfortunate that people that worked under him maybe didn't have my back or they had their own agenda. But that's the entertainment business, man. It's very cutthroat. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cry over spilled milk. I'm just gonna keep it moving. And we definitely know that that us fans, we have not seen the last of you. And and like you said, even though we're going back on this podcast and talking about you know some career milestones and and landmarks at your time in WWE, there's still I'm sure things in your future that we're also going to be talking about here soon that are going to be even more landmarks and career, career milestones for you. I want to thank Fred again for joining me today, and we hope everyone listening enjoyed this look back at one of the high points in his career, and we look forward to bringing you more episodes of the Roster Rewind here on Sports Kita. Make sure you subscribe to the Sports Kita YouTube channel so you're the first to know when our latest episodes drop, and we'd love to hear your comments and feedback, so make sure that you leave us a comment, leave us a like, and tell people about what's going on here at Sports Kita um, and Fred's new podcast. Fred, do you want to tell the fans where they can catch up with you and follow you on social media? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fred Rosser, R-E-A-L-F-R-E-D-R-O-S-S-E-R. And also, I have my own podcast, Pro and Bro Wrestling, where I do it with, with my real-life neighbor out in California, making moves, still making moves, still making million-dollar moves. So, uh, yeah, follow me on all, all my social media, social media platforms, Real Fred Rosser, Pro and Bro Wrestling. And, uh, yeah, that's that. Hashtag block the hate, salute the great. Make sure you give Fred a follow and look for his contributions to Sports Kita over at SportsKita.com. He's already posted a great article about a story involving himself and CM Punk that you need to go read, so make sure you go and check it out. You can find me on Twitter at Corey Guns if you'd like to give me a follow, and we will see you guys next time right here on the Rosser Rewind.